Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use the box method to professionally vectorize your logo type design. This video is brought to you by logodesign.net. So here we have a logo in the middle of our screen. This is something that I did for some hand lettering, maybe a typeface design. Now, you can see this looks pretty professionally done. It's very clean and it's very vectored. You can see that if I go through the direct selection tool, I've got some anchor points on there. And a lot of these anchor points are placed in certain ways. You can tell that with this, it's all horizontal and vertical, aside from these little points in the left and right. You can see how all the anchor points are pretty symmetrical and in unison, which makes you think, well, how do they do that? How do they know where to put these anchor points? Well, I'm going to be showing you how to do that today very easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a new document over here. I've got my new document panel and I'm going for A4. It doesn't really matter where you go, but I like A4 as a starting point. I want to take my image that I've imported into this one and bring it over here. Now this image, all I've done is drop the opacity down. You can see it's a drawn image that I did in Procreate, so it makes it a bit easier to scan it in. But don't worry, if you don't have a scanner, just take a picture of your drawing or your type. Make sure it's pretty clean that you can tell the outlines of it generally and that you've got some guides on there that have helped you. You want the better the drawing, the better the outcome of this. So what we're first going to do is we're going to have this in the center of our screen. So just highlight your image, you know, go ahead and align it. And then we want to go to a layer function over here. I'm just going to bring it in. Now this layer here, I want it to be called template. So double click on that and just type in template. And we've got that there. We're then going to create another layer just here. And it's basically like a group of layers, really. I'm going to call this a vector. Now with this layer here selected, change this to about 10% opacity. We don't want it to be like showing too much. We want to see where we're putting our dots and our lines. Then all you have to do is lock this template layer and forget about it completely. Now, before we get into actually showing you how to do it, I want to show you the theory behind the box method. So if you don't know, the theory behind the pencil and vector artwork is that you've got basically paths. These paths are called Bezier paths. And you can see here, if I just highlight them, we've got these weird anchor points that are manipulated and you can manipulate them all the way down. And you can mess them around like this. You can do whatever you need to do here. If I was to pull this down, you can see where the curve is going to go there. If I move this up, you can see this is going to come up and act all strange. And if I move this, it's going to act strange. If I go to outline mode, you can see I've got this circle around here. If I draw a square, it's the same thing. We've got anchor points, but we don't have any sort of like handles like we do over here. The basis of vector form is that these handles and anchor points are basically the borders around the shape. And this is how it can mathematically scale up and down because these are the paths that you create. Now, as you can see, when I drew a circle, Illustrator went ahead and basically made a shape for me uh, with anchor points and the handles, and it's done it perfectly. You can see we've got one, two, three, four anchor points at the top, bottom, left and right. And if I was to draw a box around this, as you can see here, there is a box, a bounding box. Wherever the box hits the circle, that is the most extreme part of the line going around. So that means that that's where an anchor point is going to be. You can also see that these handles here, if I zoom in, these handles are uniform all the way around. They look kind of similar all the way around because it's creating the same bend all the way around. Now the goal of anchor point placement and pen tooling, if you were to call it pen tooling, is to have correct anchor point placement using this method because this is the way that it's designed to be to create shapes. With this square here, you can see there's no handles because all we had to do was use our pen tool and just drag like this and it would create lines. But if I go ahead and like basically make this into a circle, you'll see I've got two handles here that come out and it makes it into a curved line. So you might be thinking, well, what, what's going on? Why are you showing us this? Well, it's a good reason for it. So if we wanted to go ahead and design this or to vectorize this here, we can actually use a circle if we wanted to. We could just go ahead and use circle and manipulate it like this. For the case of this video, I'm going to show you all you really need to do is create a guide. So go ahead and change your filter stroke. And then we're going to create a guide or a box around this. I'm just going to create a box. And then I'm going to reduce the stroke size to about 0.25 points. 
And all we want to do is just manipulate this so we draw a box around the shape like this. So as soon as it hits the shape, you stop like this, like that. So now we know that these are going to be anchor points outside of here. We know exactly where they're going to be placed. They're going to be placed there, 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 and there. But what about the inside? Well, we just repeat the process. So all I do is go ahead, highlight this square, Command C or Control C, and then Command F, and that pastes it. We're just going to go inside. You can see there where it's hitting at the bottom here. It hits that shape, let go. It hits that shape, let go. It hits this, let's go. And then it hits there. We have there all the anchor points that we need, eight anchor points in total. So right now what I'm gonna do is highlight both of these and you can press Command-5 and this will create guides that you can switch on or off like so. So all we need to do now really is place the anchor points and pull the handles in a uniform way. And it sounds really simple, but it's hard to master, but you have to practice this over and over again. I use something called Inkscribe instead of the pen tool. Reason being, Inkscribe's easier. It's a plugin from Astute Graphics that makes it easier to use the pen tool, but it's exactly the same. So if you have the pen tool, you can just use that. So all we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead to my pen tool. You can see it here. I'm gonna turn on Smart Guides, Command U, or going up to View and Smart Guides. And then I'm going to go to the top of the shape here and I'm just going to create an anchor point. And what I'm going to do is make sure that that line that I'm drawing, I'm going to hold shift. And you can see here where my handles are going. I'm going to hold shift because if I don't hold shift, this sort of can go anywhere. And we want it to go this way. I'm going to go to horizontal. We don't want it to go vertical. We don't want it to go over to the right on a 90 degree angle. We want it to go horizontal and exactly horizontal. So we're gonna create that, let go. And you can see here, we've got this rubber band going on. If we just do the same, we're gonna go all the way around, depending on which way you went. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna do this, let go. Same over here, do this, let go. Over here, do this, let go. And then over here. Now you can see that is not the shape that we want. It looks kind of like a weird egg. So what we need to do is go ahead and basically mess around with these handles, keep them uniform until it fits the shape. Now there's a really good system of making sure that you keep your handles correct as well. And the way that I do it is by making sure that this handle here does not intersect this line here at the top. And this one doesn't intersect this line here. So all you need to do is basically hold shift we're going to drag and make sure that these two handles are coming out at relatively the same amount we don't want one to hold more of the other so we're just going to do that and we're going to work our way over here to this line here and you can see that these two handles in this section here are creating this curve we want it to use both the handles and we want it to be as far from the anchor point as the other one that looks pretty good to me. And we can test this by just going ahead and going to outline mode, turn off guides. And we can see there we've got a pretty good circle going on there and it's only done with four anchor points. Now with the next one, we can go ahead and just do the same thing. I'm just gonna do it really quick. I'm just gonna plot where the anchor points are gonna go, like so. This is a very strange way of doing it, but it is possible. And you see that it doesn't really work. So we need to go straight in. We need to go in and mess with these handles one by one. So we want this one and this one. I'm only focusing on this curve right now using these two handles. There should be a horizontal and a vertical one. And then I'm gonna to resort to this one here and see what we get. Giving and taking and giving and taking. That looks pretty good to me. We can see up here, we've got an issue. We can see that one of the handles here have come too far outwards and it's intersected. So we bring this out and back. Bring this up a bit, maybe bring this out a bit. We can see here that this one's come out too far. We can go right in and get into good detail here. And the same thing has happened down here. Move this back in, move this back out. And there we've got a pretty good anchor point placement. Now with circles and stuff, and if you want them to be real, and if you want them to actually work perfectly, you don't have to do that. All you really have to do is go ahead and create a circle and manipulate it around. So we just have to basically just go ahead and manipulate it like so. Let's 
create the outline and turn off smart guides. And it won't be perfect because you haven't used a pen tool or it might be too perfect. But all we need to do is basically do this, rotate this next one, make it smaller. Then I'm just going to go ahead and mess around with it until we get it perfectly in line. And it takes a bit of practice, but this is probably the easiest letter to do to show you. And as you see, even though we've done it with just the shapes, it uses the same maths as we did last time. It uses the same points. And I knew exactly where they're going to go because of the box method. So what you do now is basically just highlight this, this both these shapes, go ahead and press Shift and X, and you'll see that this hasn't been cut out. So we need to cut it out by pressing Shift and M, cut this out with the Shape Builder tool like so. And there you've got your perfect sort of O right there. Now the next step is basically to carry on this process all the way through and refine it later. So I've got an even better way of doing this than most, which is very quick. So I'm just going to do the box method here. Go ahead and put this down to 0.25. I'm going to box this around so I know exactly where I'm going to go with the lines. Do it again. I'm just going to copy it down. And sometimes you won't know exactly where the lines are, but you can use common sense to work it out. There. And then, go around the shape. And it doesn't really matter about the handles, just get the anchor points placed where they're supposed to be. And if you get that correct, you'll be okay. You can see here, this is where it gets a bit hard. So I'm just going ahead up here and moving this over there. Then we've got a place here. So I'm gonna go for a long one here. Now that we've got the anchor points placed, we can go ahead and move the handles where we need to be. So this needs to come down further and this needs to come over here. Now, as you can see, we've got a bit of an issue. This doesn't follow the exact line. You can leave that or you can go ahead and make it even better. Up here, we've got a bit of an issue as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this, move it. And you can move these lines pretty quickly and easily all the way through your document. You don't have to worry too much about them. We want to make sure we've got an even spread and that nothing looks too strange. And having the anchor point placement is great and a great starting basis because it makes your text so much more editable during the whole process. So that is a quick rundown using the pen tool all across Illustrator for your logo type design. This video was brought to you by logodesign.net. Now I've teamed up with logodesign.net to bring you some amazing tutorials. And as part of those tutorials, I've actually written up a blog post about each tutorial that I have created so you can get even more in-depth insight and education from these. Logodesign.net have so many resources for graphic designers and especially logo designers or aspiring logo designers. So if you'd like to see this tutorial in a written format with a few more hidden tips and tricks, then click the link down below in the description and make sure you share it with your friends. If you guys like this video, please press that red subscribe button and press the little bell next to it, which turns on all post notifications so that whenever I upload a video like this, you can get it straight to your inbox or to your phone and it will notify you. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to me. If you did enjoy it, press that like button. If you didn't enjoy it, press the dislike button twice and I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye.